going on? Hey, this is Marcus, straight from Twitch, and we wanted to take a look at the current state of the VGC17 metagame here on my channel. Actually, I could have tweeted out about this, and I will do that now. So, or I just retweet. I don't know, whatever. You you can also, if you feel to, you can go over to Twitter, whatever. So, yeah, I'll record this from my Twitch, but, um, so we'll have a live thing going on and then there will be a discussion kind of later on with the chat mm, to see what they think but we have the top 30 Pokemon here from the global link website and we will have a look at what people are using or what people have been using the first week only on battle spot since yeah the data is only for the second season so that is only yeah, one week old, and so the numbers are not really saying too much, but we'll still have a look at what people are using. Um, most used Mon, surprisingly for some people, is Arcanine, and Arcanine is in fact not a Pokemon that, well, was super dominant in any of its previous formats where it was good. Like, in 2009 it was decent and people used it, but yeah, that's about it. But now it looks like it's super, super strong. Also at the beginning of 2015 some people used it. But, um, yeah, Arcanine is the most used Pokemon in the first week of Battle Spot Rated Battles, um, which is interesting, and um, it makes a lot of sense, though, since Arcanine is really one of the best Intimidated Mons in the game, um, or in the format, I should say, and one of the best checks to Kartana. Well, it's not only a check, it's like a counter, I should say, since you can switch into any attack, and then you have Fire-type attacks, and... Um, also, extreme speed potentially if you feel like it to pick off um, focus sash variants. So yeah, Arcanine is really really good against Kartana, and um, yeah, Kartana is like good against a lot of Pokemon. So you have to have something that deals with Kartana in order to be able to stop it. Um, looking at the moves, Protect is only used on 64% um, of Arcanines, with, which is not that high. So I wanted to also check um, how many have Assault Vest, and it's not too many. So quite a decent amount of people are like, okay, like Choice Ban, of course, um, doesn't have Protect, and then the Assault Vest also doesn't have Protect, but that only adds up to like around 20%, uh, meaning that there's still like a decent chunk of Arcanine, like 16% that are not using Protect. I would guess that they maybe use something like Morning Sun to get some more um, durability, but um, okay. And then as for the other moves, uh, most Arcanines are physically based, the most common attack is Flare Blitz, even before Extreme Speed, which you can use on special sets, and I have done that before. Um, Snarl is, in my opinion, one of the best moves Arcanine has at the moment, since um, yeah, with Intimidate and Snarl, especially on de uh, defensive teams and against defensive teams, you can do um, a lot of damage reduction, and it can be, it can be really good to help um, in reducing damage. And that also brings me to another point when looking at the items. Um, all You have to think about that all these berries, they are like split up because there are so many different ones that you can use. But we have Aguaf Berry at 10% and then there's Iapapa Berry at 2% and then Wiki Berry and then there's also some more items. So if you if we just imagine that the other are also at like around, I don't know, 1% or something, then this adds up to more than Choice Band. So it's more likely to see a 50% Berry Arcanine to then to see a Choice Band Arcanine, which is interesting. Citrus Berry is still the most common one, as it's probably the easiest to use, since with Citrus Berry it'll almost always activate, whereas the 50% Berries on something without Gluttony, they will only activate, like, sometimes. But then, um, Fire Rim Z is still the most common item, as, yeah, if you don't have anything that really wants to have a Z-move, then Arcanine is a good candidate for that, because it doesn't really need an item to function. Um, you can use safety goggles if you're really struggling, for example, against Lily and Charcoal, but um, besides, like, it doesn't really need the item to do the job, so Fire Rim Z is a good thing to have. Um, also, other physical attacks like Wild Charge indicate that you can go, or close combat, you can go with a full offensive physical set with um, Choice Band. And some, there's also some more cool ideas that are not even listed here. For example, Bulldoze is an interesting thing that has popped up a little bit of steam in the Japanese community. Um, they've been using Bulldoze with Assault Vest. And I think that can be really good because there's not really too many types of speed control at the moment. I mean, Tailwind is a little bit... Nah, you don't want to really base your team around Tailwind. Like, with Mandibus, what you do is you set up multiple Tailwinds. So then that's better, I think. But using something like Talonflame or even Whimsicott 
as we've just used um, on Battle Spot. Yeah, usually you will give up a mon to set up the Tailwind, and then usually that's that's not really that's not really worth it. So, um, yeah, bulldoze can be a cool thing, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we'll have in the future. I think Roar will probably go down a little bit more in usage since. Uh, let's be honest, like, you probably want to have a more consistent way in stopping some stuff, but then again, if your team is really lacking an answer for Trick Room, then you can also use Roar. Or, for example, like I did with my London team, I didn't have a good matchup against Trick Room or setup based teams, so then Roar is, like, super fine, of course, and you can definitely use it. Will O Wisp is another interesting move, and I think Will O Wisp is a move where a lot of people say, like, it's a staple in Arcanine and everyone should use it, and then other people say, like, no one should use it. Um, because a lot of these Arcanines are paired up with Tabu Fini, so then, of course, if Misty Terrain is active, which you usually want to have, then you cannot use Dallas moves against grounded Pokemon, which is the majority of the format. So you cannot Will O Wisp Garchomp, for, for example. So I think Will O Wisp can be really good on faster Arcanine on teams without Tabu Fini. But if you have Tabu Fini, then uh, I would really think about, think twice about running Will O Wisp, since you could also be running something like Extreme Speed, which can be super useful sometimes. And then you, I think, personally, I think. If you're running like a standard Arcanine with a berry, like either Citrus Berry or 50% Berry, you want to have Protect, Snarl, a Fire type attack, and then a Filler, depending on what your team needs. But um, yeah, moving on, Arcanine is the most common Pokemon at the moment, and but right behind we have Garchomp, which um, yeah, which went through a little bit of a change in move sets. We have Poison Jab here sitting at 77%. Um, which is not what we're used to seeing from previous formats, but of course we have the Tapus, um, 1, 2, 3 here on 4, 5, and 6. And then Tapu Bulu, of course, the primary target for Poison Jab also somewhat down there. So Poison Jab is actually a legit cover remove, um, especially considering that Dragon Claw is not really that good anymore because of Tapu Fini, once again, Misty Terrain, halving the damage that you could do with Dragon type attacks against Granite Pokemon, so most of the time um, you want to use something else. And also, interestingly enough, um, the most held item, Gronium Z, allows Garchomp to have that single target stab attack that um, Dragon Claw provided in previous years. And it's only one time use, but um, just the fact that you can one hit KO Arcanine even when you're at minus one just goes to show how powerful this attack is. Um, Choice Scarf is something that I've touched upon a little bit during the battle part of the stream. I think Choice Scarf can be really, really good because of how little um, ground resistance we have. And if you set up, like, if you not base your team around having Garchomp Sweep, but if you have certain setups, like for example, Celestial plus Garchomp is super strong late game. If you lock yourself into Earthquake, or also just having something like Ninetales, damage everything with Blizzard or like Tabu Fini with some some more stuff with spread moves, and then Garchomp can out can come out in the end and outspeed everything and Oko with with Earthquake from the HP that they're at, and I think that that's something that it has been like it's a little bit underused at the moment in the Verston scene, but I think um, that has some potential. There are some more items, but I think Granium Z. Um, choice scarf and maybe a salt vest can a salt vest can also be good if you um, for example you can run a super bulky spread because you don't have to use um, max speed on guard jump you can even go with slower than tapu lele for example and then like super slow but super bulky and i think that can also be good but then you really have to have something to earthquake next to because guard jump will rely on using earthquake most of the time to do damage mm. It's interesting to note that then the third place Kartana, like all these Pokemon, you can use all of them together. And that's a thing that sets this format like super apart from last year's format. Last year you really had to choose which route you wanted to go. You couldn't use Groudon, Xerneas, Kyogre, and Rayquaza, for example, at the same on the same team, even though they were like all super high up in usage. Um, you kinda I don't know, like, that's also why people have been saying that good stuff is just, like, the good stuff at the moment. Um, yeah, you can really just put all these strong Pokemon together in one team and they help each other. They will complement each other, typing-wise. Like, Arcanine and Garchomp, they work together. They, they both lose to Bulky Waters, but hey, then you have Kartana and then all, all of a sudden those three of them... There is very, very, very few Pokemon that can deal with all of them. One of them that does a decent job is Tapu Koko, but then, like, okay, you can also use Tapu Koko and then at least not have a bad matchup. And then 
I don't know, like team building in this format is will be uh, like at least for good stuff teams. Of course, there's other options as well. Yeah, you, you can say, okay, I want to build a dedicated trick room team or I want to build a rain team or something like that. But if you just want to start with um, the best or the most used Pokemon, I should say, then you can just throw all of them together on a team. The one limiting factor over that is that the, is the Tapus. You generally don't want to have Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, and Tapu Lele on, it, on the same team. So these six, the six most used mons, they don't um, add up to a good team. Uh, can I can I go back to... No, I can't. Uh, that's a shame. If you went back to 2015 battle spot and check the rankings there, then you could use like the first six mons would like literally be chalk or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's not the case here. You, you cannot really use all three of the Tapus, but um, you can choose one or two of them and then have these, these three guys and then you will already have a good team. So, checking on what people have used on Cortana. Um, I think it's interesting to note that Protect is only, like, at 40%. At the beginning of the format, everyone was saying how, um, like, Focus Search Cortana will be the only set because of its paper thin, literally paper thin special defense. But, um, in the end, it turned out that, okay, there's also 11% with Detect, so that's 50-50. But then it turned out that Assault Vest is, like, such a strong choice here. Because, um, if you invest a lot in special defense and HP, you can actually make Cortana survive some attacks. Actually, let's, let's, let's just calc just for, no, that's the wrong calc. Uh, let's just calc a little bit to see how much of a difference, um, Assault Vest makes. Or how much of a difference, like, Assault Vest in a certain terrain makes. So we have, um, I, th I think you should be able to see this. We have Life Orb, Tabu Coco, Thunderbolt in Electric Terrain against Cartana with no investment. Easily KOs, so you would have to run Focus Sash to survive this attack or, like, a bunch of special defense EVs. But if we're using Assault Vest Cartana and we, we're pairing it up with Tabu Fini and then there is no terrain, even Life Orb, Tabu Coco, Thunderbolt, like, with this split, which isn't even the most bulky one, like, there is a chance that they don't 3 hit KO you, and if you can, like, invest some more points or drop a little bit of speed for, like, I don't know, you can make this attack not even a 3 hit KO. So, like, it just makes such of a difference, and it totally turned um, around the way that people have seen Cortana and the way people are using Cartana. So, yeah, Focus Ash still being the most common item here on Battle Spot, but Assault Vest right after that. And then some more interesting options like Choice Scarf, which I haven't really seen in the um, Western scene at all, but um, some Japanese players made it super high up on the ladder. Um, some of them even dropping Night Slash as the fourth move in favor of something like Guillotine for a like surprise wanted KO move, just for whatever Hail Mary attempt if you really need it, or a Razor Leaf is another option that you can do. It's super weak, but... Um, Sometimes it'll give you like a double beast boost and then um, with a beast boost then it won't be that weak So that's also another option you can use um, As for the nature usually all Cortanas will be jolly some tend to be adamant or maybe some are even careful I'm not sure if I could recommend any of these other natures um, But for assault vest you can definitely go with adamant for choice scarf You can definitely go with adamant, but usually you want to capitalize on the speed outspeeding guard chomp nihilego Tabulele and so on. It's just super beneficial and helpful especially if you have the type coverage that Cortana has to hit all of those mons for good damage. Mm. Another interesting set that has been used in Japan for um, a bit now is Substitute and Grassium Z. The synergy be behind that is with Grassium Z with Leaf Blade. Even when you're at minus one, you can knock out Tapu Fini. And you can add um, regular attacks that you can knock out a Garchomp from full health. So... Against neutral targets, you will do a ton of damage, and then if you can grab a KO with Beast Boost, um, Cartana can like really get out of control, get some more KOs because of now it's plus one, and stuff that usually deals decently with it won't anymore. And with Substitute, you can um, you can keep that attack boost because Intimidate from their Arcanine won't really hurt you. So, and then the situation will be like, okay, now instead of having a minus one Cartana against an Arcanine, you will be like a plus one and behind a sub or like something like that. I don't know. It just changes the dynamic between Arcanine and Cortana a little bit because now Arcanine needs to invest more moves to take it out. Because with the Assault Vest, one of the main downfalls is that it doesn't have Protect. So you know that if you can send out your Arcanine, you will always checkmate their Cortana and they have to switch out or sack it. But with Substitute Protect, you can Protect 
and then they need to you, you waste a turn breaking your substitute and then you can protect again for example so they will have to use way more moves um, than regularly and you can use that to manipulate the pace of the game that's just um, a set that I could recommend or that I could just recommend trying out I'm not sure how strong it's exactly but it's um, pretty decent and then there are some more options but I don't really want to go in too deep yep moving on um, next move the next one here is Tabu Koko um, at the beginning of the format some people tried out that physical set since um, the attack set is higher than the special attack set but now people have shifted basically entirely over to using um, the special set there's in fact no physical move here at all no not even wild charge made it so yeah Dazzling Gleam is the only um, fairy type attack stat that you have and um, so you really want to use that there's no moon blast unfortunately you can use nature power which also didn't make the cut here but um, is an interesting option um, if you're running Tapu Fini, um, Nature Power will turn into Moon Blast, so then you have Moon Blast if the Misty Terrain is up. And if your Electric Terrain is up, then Nature Power will turn into a Thunderbolt. So in theory, you wouldn't even have to run Thunderbolt, though I can really still recommend that since sometimes you just really want to have Thunderbolt. And yeah, sometimes you just really want to have the option of um, not really having to care about what the terrain is at the moment because... Yeah, like if, if it's Psychic Terrain and then you go for Psychic, but you just needed Thunderbolt to KO their Tapu Lele, for example, then you won't be happy. Um, besides, something else that has picking up a lot of steam is Hidden Power. Um, usually, uh, the Hidden Power of choice was Ice, since Dazzling Gleam is not enough to KO um, Garchomp at all. In fact, against bulkier versions, you can even miss the 2 hit KO, unless you run like Life Orb or Choice Packs. But um, there is now some really bulky Garchomp that also take the Hidden Power Ice. So, huh, what people did, or what some people did, is they changed their hidden power type from ice to fire to instead deal with another one of the super, super used Pokemon, which is Kartana. Now, the thing is, Tabu Koko is faster than Kartana, and a lot of Kartana are using Assault Vest, so you can outspeed, and if you're using Life Orb, you can KO them before they can do anything, and they won't expect it, because as we saw from the Skulk, they expect to be safe, you know? But um, if you have hidden power fire on here, then... They, that will KO, even against the Assault Vest set. But um, you kind of need the Life Orb for that, since if they're bulky and, like, if you're using Hidden Power Fire, you definitely want to KO them, you know? Like, there's not really a point in not using Life Orb with this, I think. Anyway, back to where we were. So, mm, yeah, Tabu Koko has some options. Um, something that I think will be interesting seeing in the future is what the nature thing will go. Um, Timid is, of course, like, Probably the more obvious choice because hey, you want to be as fast as possible, you want to hit as hard as possible, so you go max speed and then max special attack with timid nature. But you can actually go modest and still outspeed most of the common threats. Like you will, like out of all these Pokemon that are here, you will outspeed all of them with um, modest. So like, what? Why would you run timid then? But there is like some strange Pokemon that are in between, and maybe you want to outspeed them, or. Yeah, maybe you want to still use Timid, but then drop your speed down so you have a lot more points available to you that you can invest into other stats, since speed is um, by far Tabu Koko's highest base stat. So you will um, save a lot of points if you go, for example, Timid, and then you just barely outspeed Gengar, or yeah, then you just you can just go with 100 speed EVs, and then you have 156 speed or like EVs that you can take out from speed into any other stat, and then you can game some bulk that way. So that's interesting. Then. Um, one more option with uh, that I wanted to talk about is the Ferium Z, since that just recently won a regional in the US with Paul Chua. <clears throat> yeah, Ferium Z is another option of giving Tabu Koko that um, fairy type attack that it so lacks. I mean, yeah, we talked about Dazzling Gleam, but you would really like to have Moonblast there. And with Ferium Z, you can get similarly to how Garchomp can get Tectonic Rage, uh, you get the Twinkle Tackle, and that will do. A ton of damage it will want to KO Garchomp that expects to stay in and take the hit you have a chance to want to KO opposing Tapu Koko but um, the chance is not that great and they can EV to live it so I wouldn't recommend banking on that but yeah Twinkle Tackle is just another one of those C moves where if you don't expect it it can catch you off guard and just lose your mon and probably the game instantly and something I wouldn't recommend is Air Balloon because that means you lose your terrain boost <laughs> anyway um, I'm kind of thinking about going down the list a little bit, but as we go down further, I won't talk about every single Mon in such detail, but I figured that they are the first couple of Pokemon are like really important, because if you want to play this format, then um, you 
really need to know what these Pokemon do, you know? So, yes, let's check out Tabu Fini because that's probably the one Pokemon where everyone thought it would be trash. Because it's the only Tapu that does not get any boosts from the terrain. So, um, yeah, a lot of people thought, like, wow, why would I even use Tabu Fini? Misty terrain is garbage. Um, grassy terrain, you get boosts to grass type attacks and you heal a health back. Psychic terrain, you can block priority moves and you get a boost to psychic type attacks. Uh, electric terrain, wow, you get a boost on electric type attacks and you block sleep. So no more Smurgle. At least that's what people thought at the beginning of this format. So now, why would you use Misty uh, terrain? So, of course, you also get the immunity to, um, to status moves for grounded Pokemon and you half the damage that dragon type attacks do to do grounded Pokemon, but then that's about it. So, why would you use Tabu Fini? But now, people have figured out that, hey, actually, most of the time, when I'm attacking with my Tabu Koko, I don't even have the terrain up if they don't want me to have it up, because they can, like, lead with another Tapu, and then if you're leading with Tapu Koko, they already get the terrain because they're slower, and um, if you're not leading with Tapu Koko, then they can switch out, knowing that you will have Tapu Koko in the back, and then you, they can switch it in later on. For example, especially Tapu Bulu, which we saw had some success in London. No, not anymore, because um, more people realize that you can, like, um, you that you should run um, Arcanine, or that you can run Arcanine, and you can run Cortana, and you can run Garchomp on the same team, so you have three Pokemon uh, with Poison Jab Garchomp, you have three Pokemon that um, hit Tapu Bulu for super effective damage, and now, yeah, no one really runs Tapu, Ko uh, Tapu Bulu, but, um, yeah, Tabu Fini um, does not really rely on its terrain. It has, pro it probably has the best overall stats from all the Tapus, but the worst terrain if you want, if we want it like that. But it really doesn't care if the terrain is up or not. Also, you don't really have to worry about boosting your opponent's attacks. For example, if you're having Tabu Koko and they have a Thunderbolt, then all of a sudden it does more damage to your whatever Pokemon Celestila than you were expecting. But with Tabu Fini, yeah. You just, you're just immune to status, which is good, like, it, it um, takes out a bit of the RNG factor. And then with Moonblast and Muddy Water, you also have two really good moves. Moonblast, a move that, for example, Tabu Koko doesn't have. Muddy Water is a strong spread move. Um, the typing, Water Fairy, is pretty unique. I mean, you have the Water Starter, but that's it, and Tabu Fini outclasses that. So, like, good typing, good resistances, overall, super, like, good bulk. Good moves because it, like it has it probably has the the best move pull out of all the tapus. It even has access to stuff like you probably don't even know, but like Grass Knot if your team struggles with Gastrodon and you're using Choice Packs Tapu Fini, and then also some other stuff like Blizzard if you want it on the Hail Spam team. So it has a lot of offensive options. But then you can also go with Calm Mind. Um, it has Taunt. Um, we've even seen some some really weird sets like for example Weakness Policy doing really well well on Battle Spot from Japanese players. So yeah, this Pokemon has a lot of potential. Um, Choice Packs is the most used set, and I've seen a lot of people say how they think that Choice Packs is probably the best set on Tabu Fini, and that all other sets are garbage. But after using, um, or uh, but after testing Choice Packs and after using Calm Mind with leftovers in Leipzig at the regional, um, I'm indifferent about this topic because I think both sets make a lot of sense, and depending on what your team has, um, both sets can be good. Uh, the one thing that Tabu Fini really lacks is recovery. Like if it had recover, then I think it would probably it would even be more of a threat. But now you, you can use, like, let's check here. Leftovers is recovery. You can use Citrus Berry, but Citrus Berry won't really make too much of a difference. You can even run one of the 50% heal berries, like Agua of Mary, Mago Berry. You can use Misty Seed to buff your special defense a little bit, since it'll always activate, no matter what the terrain situation is. But only, and then again, it's only one time use. And your opponent, which is also interesting in my opinion, will know what item you have. So then they won't be tricked into thinking that you're, I don't know, like, specs or I don't even know. They won't be afraid of activating your 50% berry or something like that. Choice Scarf is another interesting option that had some usage at the very beginning of the format um, in a rain team that I saw that did some stuff on online on showdown. But um, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend. Like any of these items, they look all like not that great. And yeah, as you can see, leftovers and choice packs is just really the norm here. Um, some other options that people have used that are not really here are Heal Pulse and Swagger. Swagger is even displayed here, but I don't see Heal Pulse. So what you can do with Swagger, since Misty Terrain of course blocks all status for grounded Pokemon, is Swagger your ally, give them a nice plus two special, uh, sorry, plus two attack boost as long as you hit, since Swagger was nerfed this generation to 85% accuracy. 
And then you can heal pause them up to make sure that they survive even longer or for example what Wolfie Glick was using with Porygon 2 with Return Porygon 2 that also has a recover. You can um, like have the Porygon 2 recover, like you can swagger and trick room and next turn you can attack and heal pause and you be up to good health. And um, yeah, that's a pretty good combination. So yeah, you should watch out for that in the future. But yeah, I think Tabu Fini is just, with its typing, with the bulk and so on, it's just like really good. Then next up we have Tabu Lele. Um, which is a little bit more one-dimensional than Tabu Fini since Calm Mind hasn't really seen any usage, I think. Um, it does get Calm Mind, but the problem is that unlike Tabu Fini, which has two steps that complement each other really well, um, Fairy and Psychic are still okay offensive-wise for coverage, but they really lack, um, again, like against Steel types, you just can't do anything. But actually, yeah, it's not that bad cons since um, they you can hit like dark types and poison types, but the only relevant or the only really big relevant poison type is Muck, which also has a dark typing, so then that doesn't really work too much. And yeah, Tabu Lele really um, is not that strong with Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam or Thunderbolt, like really Psychic is where its strength lies, since yeah, thanks to Psychic Terrain it'll do a ton of damage to anything. Um, some other cool options, it has Hidden Power, it's Shadow Ball, maybe as a filler for a Scarf set, but really not that common. Protect surprisingly only at um, 48%, so let's check the items. Choice Scarf by far the most common item, and then Choice Specs um, also pretty common, and then Plague MZ, so yeah, with Tabu Lele, yeah, you really want to do um, as much damage as you can, and I think it makes sense that people go with this since, like, just a Pokemon like Celestila shuts down Tabu Lele so hard, and there is no, not really any way around it with, for example, let's say Substitute and Call Mind or something like that. So, um, yeah, you really want to hit the field hard, do as much damage as you can immediately and then switch out. Electrium Z is actually pretty interesting, I haven't th thought about that. Um, but yeah, even Ferium Z not seeing any usage. So yeah, with Double Lele usually you will expect an offensive set. And yeah, and that's fair and fine. So we covered the three most Pokemon usually. For a super standard team, you will see those three, Arcanine, Darcham, and Kartana. They are really common and they are really good. Doesn't mean that they are unbeatable though. And then like one or two of the Tabus, and I think that makes sense. But um, it's, inter it's interesting to see like going down the list how some of the Pokemon that people thought would be the most common in the format just are down all the way down here, like Marowak. Um, rank 16 at the moment here but then again you also uh, I've said this before but this is only data from one week of play so maybe it's actually a little bit higher but yeah Pokemon like Marowak where everyone thought that it would be super good in stopping Tabu Coco now really struggles with the metagame shifting since it it's not good against Tabu Fini um, Garchomp is way more common Arcanine is there for Intimidate so um, even Kartana runs Night Slash nowadays on the Assault Vest set so yeah Marowak not really doing too much of what it used to do so basically the only place you, where you will see Marowak these days is on a like super or like defensive trick room teams or maybe even on like, let's check how, how often is Jolly used. <laughs> yeah, maybe like on Tailwind or something. But yeah, it's not that it's not that common anymore. Mm, some more cool Pokemon that I want to talk about. Um, let's actually start with Muck since it's one of the few mons that can take on all the Tapus relatively well um, since with Gluttony which we're seeing here at 85%, and the Figgy Berry, or Epapa Berry, or Aguaf Berry, basically you're, um, you're a 1.5 times the muck. And then you can use um, its like stab moves in Poison Jab and Knock Off, which are actually super good stab moves if you think about it, like Knock Off. Not many mons get Knock Off without Tutor, but muck is lucky enough to have it. Mm. And Muck, like you, you will, you can expect those three attacks: knock off, protect, and poison jab. And then, depending on what type of Muck it is, it can have curse, it can have gunk shot if they're feeling lucky. It can even have flamethrower to take out Cortana. Can have shadow sneak just to pick up opponents. Um, even taunt, minimize, imprison. Like there's a bunch of options. And um, but usually, yeah, you will have knock off, protect, poison jab with usually adamant or brave nature. And then um, a berry to abuse gluttony, since then the berry, of course, will already activate at 50% of itself and heal back 50%. So Muck is really cool, but doesn't have too many options. So um, yeah, I'll just move on a little bit. Imprison is an interesting option that you can use to just shut down your opponent's Muck, since they will have those three moves as, that I just mentioned, Poison Jab, Knock Off, and Protect. 
And then if you imprison them, they can really they can all use their last move and then maybe try to shadow sneak you. I don't know. I don't even know. But um, I think that's a little bit too um, situational for my taste. Like of course you also lock down protect for everything else. And maybe if you have something with a big nuke like Psychium Z Tapolele, then maybe um, it's worth locking protect. But usually, um, I think it's probably too situational. But it can definitely be good. And Porygon 2 is a Pokemon that is super interesting because it's also so clear what you're expecting. Like, mm, maybe some some guy forgot his item, but I'd say like 99.9% .9 should have Eviolite. Okay, actually it says 100%, but, but one guy, yeah, forgot his, forgot his item. So yeah, it always has Eviolite, of course. Why would you run anything else? There's no reason. So it'll always be, or actually not, actually quiet and modest are pretty common. I wanted to say it'll always focus on its bulk, but yeah, some people tend to run um, offensive versions as well, which is fair since with download, as we check the ability, 95% are using download. If you get the plus one special attack boost, um, Porygon can hit really hard. Now a trend we've seen recently is a change of normal type attack. Discharge and frustration become uh, became interestingly popular. Um, try attack is still the main move here, but as you can see, try attack is also like not that high up in usage. Since usually with Ice Beam and like Thunderbolt you have the good old Bolt Beam combo that hits a lot of mons for at least neutral damage. And then if you have plus one then you essentially get stab on those moves. But um, you can use something like Ice Beam and then return and if you get the special attack boost well great you have Ice Beam and then if you get the attack boost you have return to do a ton of damage. Toxic is something that was um, common when Gastron was super big but now has also faded out a little bit. Um, Shadow Ball uh, hits Marowak but is not that common anymore. Even Protect is more common. Um, protect is actually something that if it had the room for it, then I think would be a really good move for Porygon because um, it's so bulky, it has recover, and mo like a lot of teams rely on double targeting it to take it out. But usually you're better off using two attacks and then recover and trick room since those are really the main moves you want to have. Um, moving on, Celestila is a Pokemon that was only used super defensively at the beginning. But now 65% are using Flamethrower. Wow. And I'm not even that surprised by this, since um, Kartana is just so popular and Celestila being the other Steel type, they are like fighting a little bit for the Steel type slot on the team. So having Flamethrower as an option against opposing Kartana can be really, really good. And to Celestila can also switch into any attack from Cortana and not take any damage. It's super good against Sabo Lele, against Garchomp, and I think Celestila is actually at the moment in the Western scene a little bit underrated since Almost everyone is using Cortana at the moment and thinking, yeah, Cortana is so great, but Celestila is also pretty, pretty good. Um, Flash Cannon is a move that picked up a little bit in popularity. Uh, if you watched the battles that I played on stream before, I was using Assault Vest. Let me check, is Assault Vest even here? Uh, what? It's actually the second most used set. Wow. So maybe there's something there um, in the Japanese scene. So yeah, Assault Vest is actually pretty common. I didn't expect that, to be honest. But yeah, with Flamethrower, Flash Cannon, Giga Drain, and then Air Slash, you have four pretty decent coverage options. You will do a ton of damage, especially after your Beast Boost, getting um, a plus uh, special attack boost if you KO something. Mm, and then you can get some health back with Giga Drain, maybe get some flinches with Air Slash, I don't know. But yeah, it looks like something to watch out for in the future. And But um, if it's not Assault Vest, or like usually you would expect um, Heavy Slam to be the attack of choice, um, Adamant also is a little more popular than it was before, but Mod is actually being the most used nature. That's so funny. I didn't expect that at all. Um, even Jolly being used on some of them. <laughs> or Timid, wow. So yeah, Celestila is a Pokemon that I think still has a lot of potential that is has not been discovered, uh, discovered. Like some sets that no one has used yet. For example, you can also do stuff like giving it a Misty Seed, pairing it up with Tapu Fini, and then using Acrobatics or something like that. But um, yeah, there's still some cool stuff out there with Celestila. And I think I'll just leave it at that for that Pokemon. Um, Ninetales is something mm, that I think can be a lot better than what we thought it would be. Since at the, at the very beginning there was a lot of Marowak and Celestila and uh, Ninetales isn't too great against those. But now since Garchomp is um, on too many teams and um, yeah, I don't know. Ninetales can just do a ton of stuff with Stab Blizzard, outspeeding a lot of things, doing a lot of chip here and there, setting up hail <clears throat> to break Focus Sash and so on. Um, and then also has some supportive options, of course. Aurora Whale, one of the best defensive moves in the game, essentially setting up Light Screen and Reflect all together. And um, there is not really too much anti weather at the moment, not really too much Torkoal or Gigalith, so Aurora Whale can really come in handy here. Um, 
And then there's also things like Encore, which I've been caught off guard by a couple of times. You can use Roar if you want to really stop Trick Room from going up. You can use Icy Wind for some speed control. Um, I wouldn't really recommend Moonblast, as I said earlier, but you can also use that. And then even Psyshock, didn't even know that it got the move, but makes sense since, yeah, it's Ninetales after all. Focus Sash, by far the most common item, but then Light Clay to um, extend the duration of um, Aurora Whale makes a lot of sense too, since there's not really anything like... You don't really have to worry about Brick Break or something to break through the effect, so Light Clay really helping that out. But then if you're running Light Clay, you really need to think about what you want to do with the EVs, because while Nantes is pretty fast, it's also super frail, and Ice and Fairy is a typing that has a lot of weaknesses, so yeah, you want to make sure that you have good EVs if you're using anything besides Life Orb. Choice Scarf, I don't think I would recommend that. Uh, I don't think any of the other items are like super super good at the moment. Light Clay, probably, but Focus Ash, just generally the item you want to use. Um, next up is Snorlax, something that I used in Leipzig um, with decent success. Uh, Belly Drum and Curse, it has um, two super strong setup moves, um, especially considering that you can use Recycle in combination with Gluttony and Figgy Berry or Papa Berry or one of the berries, you know what I'm talking about. Because then uh, what you can do is just recycle the berry over and over after you um, after you already consumed it. And that way you can back up, you can get back up to like a very high HP and also consume the berry. So you will keep the boosts, but you can restore your item and the health, which is in my opinion super incredibly strong. Mm. So if you're using something like Trick Room setup with Mimikyu or Anguru, and then you can go for Belly Drum, or if you're using it more like an anti-Trick Room Pokemon like I did on my team, you can use Curse, since um, it is already super slow, and then you can use Brave Nature, and after one Curse, Snorlax will underspeed Torkoal. As for move options, Return is generally the main stab move, but then you can go with um, either Protect if you want to be safe, and then I think Recycle and Curse, or Recycle and Belly Drum even, is like the hottest set at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, high horsepower for coverage against Marowak and Metagross, but you can also use Crunch for that, since, yeah, it hits, like, similar targets, but Crunch also hits Celestial for a little more. Didn't even know it got Wild Charge, but you can also use that if you're really afraid by, uh, from Celestial. And if you're using um, Belly Drum, then you probably want to use either Earthquake or Rock Slide to really capitalize on the plus six boost, so you don't waste your attack into a Protect, for example. So, yeah, I think Snorlax... It's pretty interesting and pretty good. It can be used against like standard teams, but usually since it's so slow, you would require Trick Room support. And the best Trick Room supporter in the format, Porygon 2, shares the normal type. So they don't they don't really have the best synergy. Um, Oranguru, the next best Trick Room setter, or maybe like Mimikyu, yeah, it's like one of the two. But Oranguru, also normal type, however, also Psychic. So they also share some of the same type and don't really have any like great resistances between the two. But um, yeah, with Mimikyu, I think Mimikyu probably makes most sense with the Snorlax if you want to go Trick Room route. Let's check, is Psychup even here? Nope, okay. Yeah, Psychup um, with Mimikyu is a strategy that can that you can pull off, like set up Trick Room, then bring in Snorlax at some point, Belly Drum, Psych it up, and then you have a plus six little Mimikyu. Huh, so for how much time have we been going? It has to be like super long. Um... Thanks for everyone in the chat who's still sticking in there. And I hope this is educational at all, but um, of course the whole thing will also be on YouTube. So then we do have Neil Lego up next. Um, actually I'll just like not go in depth here. You can check out the website um, yourself, 3ds.pokemon-gl.com slash battle slash hashtag YCS. Link will also of course be in the description and probably also spam in Twitch chat here. Um, Neil Lego. I think people could figure out a better way to use Neo Lego than it could be like really good. For example, it learns Trick Room and Cartana was also like I like to compare Cartana to Neo Lego because Cartana also was said to be like oh wow, it's like so good, but then the special defense is so bad and it's like similar with Neo Lego, it's fast, super good special attack, good coverage, nice typing, but then the defense just sucks. So you can actually now you cannot really use Assault Vest, because that wouldn't really help. But you could use uh, something I did before, was use a Grassy Seed with Tabu Bulu. <laughs> and then you weaken the power of Earthquake and you weaken or, and you gain a plus one defense. So maybe that's something to look into in the future. But besides Neo Lego, like the typing wise, Neo Lego hits like super well. It hits um, Arcanine for super effective damage. You can run Hidden Power of Ice to hit Garchomp. You have Sludge Bomb for the Tapus. 
and then power jam just is like really reliable i don't know like nilego's typing offensive wise is pretty good but mm, there hasn't been too many like super great teams with it um looking down the list a little more pelipper is the second most common weather nowadays behind nine tails gastron is still in there and all of these pokemon have some have some relevance but um the the most standard teams they will usually use like um, like a couple of these Pokemon and then maybe one or two from down here but um, like all of these are or most of these Pokemon down here are used on the like second most common archetype which I would say is Trick Room teams, Trick Room based teams for example like Gigalith, Torkoal, Araquanid, Marowak, Mimikyu, even Porygon Z, um, Hariyama you usually use those in Trick Room teams actually let's check Porygon Z since Trick Room is pretty common on Showdown on it yeah 10% with Clefable, with, which doesn't even show up here. But yeah, Normalium Z and then Hyper Beam with Trick Room is a pretty strong strategy with Porygon Z. So yeah, there's still some decent diversity. And um, yeah, I'm sure there's other websites or other YouTubers or other people where you can check out some of the um, data on how these Pokemon are used. But I also wanted to compare the stats that we got from here to... Um, stats that a friend of mine once you're young compiled for ml game um, what he did was he played some balance spot and he wrote down the teams that he faced so we can um like just see what he was seeing on uh, 1800 and above since of course the global links uh, they don't really um they don't uh, make any difference between what your rating is so um checking here from players with the high rating we're seeing Arcanine on the top as well, and there's Garchomp, Coco Cartana, and Reversed Order, but that's only like minimal difference. Porygon 2 is a little higher than on the other list, um, as well as Celestila. And which Pokemon is missing here? Like someone someone who's really up this high here? Oh, Muck. Yeah, Muck is like way down. Muck is here at 24th. Like, not a lot of people used Muck at the highest of battle spot. But, um,. Like here uh, in the new season, it's uh, super high. Also, he did this in the last, in the end of the last season. So the meta game probably is a little bit different since it's um, like two weeks old or something. So, um, yeah, basically you can also check out all these numbers in the description. And then he's doing a really good, great job of doing what I just did, just talking about the most common Pokemon and why they're common and what they're doing. Um, what people are using on them, why they're using them, and so on. So you should really check that out as well. And, um... Celestial Sweeper, Flame Charge, Heavy Slam, Earthquake Protect, Gronium Z. Yeah, that's something you can do as well with Cartana. Yeah, it's... Uh, sorry, with Celestia. That's a really interesting Pokemon. What does he say for Nilego? Life Art, Power Gem, Ice... Uh, Hidden Power Ice, Choice Scarf. Oh no, it struggles with Choice Scarf. Trick Room Nilego with some bulk, yeah, that's what I said, um, hmm, you can, you can use it with, uh, you can, you can evade it in a certain way that it will get a plus speed boost instead of plus special attack, which is actually pretty clever, since then you will be super fast, and with life orb you're still, um, you're still pretty powerful, so yeah, there's still some options for new lego, and that's what I was saying, so, yeah, and then he says that the current top strategy is Tabu Fini, Arcana, and Cartana, and um, that is also what, um, yeah, what I was thinking. That's why I used that core in Leipzig. Common teammates include Garchomp, Ninetales, Mandibus, Snorlax, Tapu Koko. Um, yes. So now what I wanted to do is just have another look at a bunch of teams here. Um, in fact, um, this was the Melbourne Challenge where the winner would uh, got $1,500. This happened um, just three days ago on Saturday. And all the teams are compiled on trainertower.com and you can check them out there. And in the end, Aaron won. But um, I don't want to talk about all of these teams, but just like looking at the usage, you will see a similar picture. Garchomp and Arcanine and Cortana a little bit lower, but um, that's only the top cut too, by the way. So Garchomp is up there, Arcanine, Fini, Porygon 2 with more usage than on the other websites, but also the, the sample size is really small here. But Garchomp being used on 80% of teams, that just really tells you a story. Celestial and Mach, Ninetales, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, some more Mandibus, some more Raquinid than on, like you would imagine. But then there's also like, down here it's really like down to chance who makes it and who doesn't. So 
Um, either, even Oricorio made it to the final, which is also uploaded to my YouTube, by the way, if you want to check that out. Togemaru is another interesting Pokemon that maybe could make an impact at some point. I think Mimikyu has some potential. Incineroar, especially once it gets um, Intimidate, can be super strong. Rain is still a thing, got top 4 in that tournament, Vikavolt, Charcoal, like there's a bunch of options really. But um, just looking at these top teams, like at the very top for example, Tabu Fini is not used as often, like it did win the tournament. But um, it was the only Tabu Fini in the semi-final, then there was only two in the top 8. And then um, even going down a little further, not too many. And then most of the Tabu Finis actually went out the first round of top cut, like there's still a bunch of them here. But um, yeah, it's just an interesting observation. Also, um, Garchomp being on like most of the teams, so it's on most teams on the, at the top, but also that didn't really go too far. We've, we've also seen some really interesting strategies here in this tournament with Feromosa and Oricorio. Oh, what, what's, what's the bird's name again? I tend to forget. Oricorio Pomp. Oricorio. <laughs> because with Dancer you can of course copy Quivenance, so that's something you can do. And then um, that's an interesting set. Um, trick room options are also pretty still viable, of course, um, as you could see here and there with Porygon and Araquanid, just two Pokemon, or here with the Mudsdale and Incineroar, buffing things up a little bit. Can be nice. Junior, a Japanese player, um, showed us some really nice tricks without a Tapu, but with Nihilego and Mandibus as an interesting combination. And yeah, you can check out those teams as well, but even something like a Boswell Hail team that we've used before on the channel. Um, or this Mimikyu Trick Room team with Torkoal, Lilligant, um, a Gar Garuda setup team with Togedomaru and Ninetales for Aurora Whale. Like, there's a bunch of different options at the moment. But um, yeah, I hope this gives a basic overview of what the metagame is like at the moment and what people use on the most common Pokemon. And that will also wrap up things here. Um, the resources, yeah, you can check them out yourself if you want to browse a little more, if you want to know what are you people using on Tapu Bulu, why is it not good anymore. I try to touch on that, but. Um, yeah, there's some really interesting stats and of course the PGL page will or should update like every week I think after maintenance on Monday they usually do the updates and um, Yeah, there's just some interesting um, stats there. You can use them yourself in team building You can try to compare your team. How is it doing at the moment and usage wise and then maybe think about Why some of the Pokemon are not used but also this shouldn't discourage you from using something like a crew or Raichu like if it fits on your team then um, it doesn't matter how common it is, but if it's the best choice for your team, then definitely go with it and use it. So yeah, that'll be it for this um, short metagame overview analysis. I don't know how long this was, but um, I'll wrap this up here. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. Of course, leave a like and comment and so on if you're on YouTube. And if you're on Twitch chat, we will now go into a small discussion about what I just said. And I wanted to ask some que uh, answer some questions. Now, if you're not following me on Twitch yet, then you should do that too twitch.tv slash 13 yoshi37 shameless plug and yep that's about it see you soon have a good day and recording over